the Nothing 2A has been a really decent phone so far. Pretty great value, actually. And I've been doing a couple speed tests, as you might have seen already, but I got a few requests for this versus an iPhone. And if you look at the iPhone 15 Plus, this phone is actually right around that same size, 6.7 inches, OLED display. The more I looked at them, I was like, wow, these look very similar. Um, granted, the iPhone's a little more premium for sure. But let's go ahead and begin with a boot up in three, two, go. But shockingly, you're getting a phone that is pretty close in size and pretty much a similar OLED display with 120 hertz here. No 120 hertz here, but where this really shines on the 15 Plus is its premium chipset. That's an A16 Bionic in there. And they do have six gigabytes of RAM. Over here on the left, you're going to find yourself 12 gigabytes of RAM plus an 8 gig of RAM booster. And then you see the no Nothing Phone turns on just a few seconds later, but not bad for, you know, being that price only a few seconds later. I'm not mad at it, but let's see how it actually performs in comparison to a more premium phone. And when it comes to unlocking these phones, you'll see right here, if I just take a look, it will recognize the face. Um, that one was the fingerprint, but it'll recognize the face really quickly. Now, this is just using the camera, so I wouldn't recommend that method. I would actually recommend this method right here, and then you can go right in. Um, with the Nothing Phone, you know, it does have to, you know, be, you have to go ahead and go like this to go ahead and unlock it. So um, you want to make sure that's showing. Let's go over here to the iPhone. You'll see bang right in. And I think the Face ID might be snappier uh, than the Nothing Phone overall. But I'm not I'm not too concerned with it. I think I got the passcode all messed up there. Hold on. I'm not too concerned with either. Both of them are very fast in that respect. Now, the iPhone or the Nothing Phone 2A, excuse me, actually has a 2.5.3 update. This is Nothing OS 2.5.3. And this is also going to be on the Android 14 MediaTek 7200 Pro CPU, 12 gigs of RAM, and a flexible OLED display. Now over here for the iPhone, this is an A16 Bionic, six gigs of RAM, Apple in-house GPU. I think it's a five core if I'm not mistaken. And um, it's a pretty snappy phone regardless of the fact that it has 60 Hertz. But one thing you'll notice is that because it has 60 Hertz, the nothing actually shines over the, this and that area. This feels like a snappier feel, at least on just the refresh rate. I'm not gonna say in performance, but definitely on the refresh rate. So that's why I really think this is such a good bargain. You know, if you want a cheaper phone versus something like an iPhone, save some cash. This could be a really good bargain. Similar size display, dual cameras on both, but you do get yourself a snappy experience. Let's get on to the app test. All right guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at the app test. Everything is closed out on both. Let's go into calendar. You can see that's faster for the iPhone. We're gonna blaze through these basic ones, faster on the iPhone, clock, Faster on the iPhone, let's go into App Store, Play Store, slightly faster on the iPhone. The only app I've been noticing is a little choppy right now is the Play Store. So I hope nothing updates the phone to fix that. I don't know if they can do that or if that's just related to the Google Play Store itself, but that's the only app I found a little choppy. Um, the iPhone, it's not a choppy phone, but the 60 hertz kind of gives me the illusion that it's choppy, even though it's not. And that's only because I look at a lot of 120 hertz displays. Let's go on to... Twitter or X. If you've never seen 120 hertz displays or haven't really looked at them much, don't really care or pay attention, you won't really notice this too much, but tech fans abundantly will notice this. They will in droves notice this. So if you're a tech fan, you're likely to notice. Let's go over here to Instagram. And so the conclusion I was coming to throughout my kind of like testing of these prior to launching this video was that because the 120 hertz is on here, and this has a 60 hertz, they kind of have the opposite effect. So the Nothing Phone, while a cheaper processor, is boosted by the 120 hertz display, whereas the iPhone, while a faster processor, is let down by the 60 hertz. They're kind of the opposite devices. Let's go over here to Best Buy. I think I like how a budget phone has a 120 hertz display more than a premium phone has a 60 hertz. Um, that irritates me a little bit more than like the slower CPU on the Nothing Phone. Let's go into products. And before you start saying in the comments, this is unfair. Um, of course, you think I'm oblivious to that fact? I know it's unfair. The point is though, I wanna showcase how good a Nothing Phone 2A is next to a premium iPhone. I was gonna do the 15, but why not just do these? It's basically the same phone and larger. Let's go into Jetpack Joyride. And you'll see, see so far, 
the apps don't seem to be launching too differently. There's the 2A. Okay, the 2A is way behind there. They don't seem to be launching like drastically differently. Let's go into Temper Run 2, which means that you don't really have to spend a grand for day-to-day -day experience. But keep in mind, there are some benefits like longer, probably better software support on the iPhone. Um, definitely better resale value. The nothing phone virtually is going to be worth like nothing, literally in like two years. Um, but at the same time, if you're not buying a phone to resell it, you're buying it to use it and you're trying to save cash, it's going to be a good idea. Let's go into Subway Surfers. I also really notice how the Nothing Phone is one of the more iPhone feeling phones. The iPhone much faster here. One of the more iPhone like feeling phones. So if you like Android, but you like the shape of the iPhone, you'll absolutely love the Nothing Phone. It kind of feels the same in that respect. Let's go into Hill Climb 2. The Nothing Phone 2 is actually making me very excited for the Nothing Phone 2, however, um, because the Nothing, or the Nothing Phone 3, excuse me, because this one is pretty darn good, and I'm just excited where they're going to go here. I like how they're just kind of like refining on what already works um, and trying to make it better and better. I don't think they could do that every year forever, but as of right now, there's a lot of improvements that could be made. I missed that one. There's a lot of improvements that could be made to the Nothing Phone series and it's kind of like exciting. It's a unique phone. Let's go into Free Fire compared to a lot of the phones on the market. Um, that's just my take. So now the iPhone looks like it was behind, but will it jump in front? Yes, it does. So you can see here, while the nothing phone has some snappy animation, the iPhone can still just pop that app faster. We would already be in this app. So you're starting to see the gap between a premium processor and a slower processor. You're going to wait a couple more seconds. Maybe sometimes like this, you'll be waiting, waiting a little bit longer. Well, this one's loading resources, so that could be the reason there. I wonder if that's what's causing that. Yep, it's, it's because it's loading resources. Let me go ahead and see if we could just pop this open faster this time. But there is a gap between premium processor. Yeah, see, now it's going to go faster. There's a gap between premium processor and budget phones, though, that is definitely noticeable, and it usually comes in the area of games. Let's go into Pub. 3, 2, 1. Pub is short for PUBG. Not like bar and pub, but like PUBG. And you'll see, faster than iPhone. And then we're coming up over here on the Nothing Phone. But the cool thing is that the Nothing Phone, while not the best graphically speaking, can still play games. Like, you can still enjoy them on this large display for under $400. Um, pretty cool, if you ask me. There's not a lot of phones at that price point that feel that nice. Like, there just isn't with, like, modern stuff on them. So that's where it shines. Let's go into Geekbench 6. The 15 Plus shines in the area of a large screen that you don't have to pay max, iPhone max level prices for, but you still get that iOS experience, which is definitely sought after by a lot of people. Let's go into 3D Mark. You can see faster there on the iPhone. Let's go into InShot. And faster on iPhone by a hair. So to me, the iPhone is loading these applications maybe a second or two faster. It's a little faster than when we compare it to more flagship grade. That's usually neck and neck. This is about a second or two faster in most of the apps, but it definitely jumped out ahead more in the game. So clearly, as we expected, this is the winner, um, but the Nothing Phone still does pretty good for what it costs. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through the apps. We have no swipe gestures here for the, um, well, on the on the iPhone, we have no double swipe gestures, but you have to do that on the Nothing Phone, but overall, still very smooth. This is where it shines, having that extra RAM. A lot of phones at this price don't give you such good RAM and such good RAM management performance. This is like, if I was in this price range, this would be one of my top picks. Not even kidding. Like, it would be a tough call between this, maybe the upcoming Pixel 8a, Galaxy A55. There's going to be a lot of comparisons this year, but that would be one of my top picks. But on the iPhone, is this much better? Not really. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm kind of noticing the 60 hertz just looks weird. By comparison now, uh, overall though, I would say the Nothing Phone is pretty close to iPhone in this performance. Of course, the Nothing Phone 2, the regular one, would be even better. But yeah, the 2A 
compared to a premium flagship held the apps pretty similarly. Okay, so the Geekbench 6 test is done. The iPhone actually finished about two minutes ago. Um, you can see a substantially higher score as expected in both areas. Um, this is three times the price and you in the multi-core, you get around three times the performance. Um, in the single core, about double. Um, so for day to day, it's not gonna feel three times faster on the iPhone, but for when you start pushing it heavy, maybe so. so there is that gap in performance. That's where you're paying the money. Even though this has a 60 hertz, it still has that performance. So let's go ahead and just quickly run a 3D life, uh, Wildlife Extreme um, just to see. We already know the iPhone's going to win this, but we're just going to see um, how much better frame rates we're going to get um, on a budget phone versus a top tier iPhone. This, this video is being made to showcase to you um, the difference in you know what you get if you go for something this price versus this price. That's I just wanted to see that, and quite a few people were asking that as well. I'll be back when we're done. All right, so we finished actually first here on the Nothing Phone 2A, 1156 on the overall score, average frame rate, 6.92 FPS, so not very big. There is no heat in there, interestingly, though. You'll see the iPhone finishing with uh, 17 FPS, so as you play more intensive games, the iPhone will score or probably give you much better performance overall, which you probably would expect. But the thing is, is that I haven't really did anything yet that's crazy intensive on the Nothing Phone 2A. Nothing really lags up except the Play Store is a little choppy right now, um, but it's been pretty good. Of course, it can't match up to this iPhone, but I wanted to make this test just to show you um, that you can get a lot of value in the other areas. Like... The big display, the dual camera, the unique design. Plastic frame might not be for everyone, but you got to weigh your expectations at this price. You know, this is a powerhouse chipset in the 15 Plus. That's just all there is to it. Um, but it is let down to me by the 60 Hertz. Let's just launch the cameras before we head up out of here. Three, two, go. iPhone could snap those photos faster, and it's going to be a little bit smoother going through the lenses on the iPhone. So, Overall, yes, the 15 Plus, the 15 models are snappier and faster than the Nothing Phone 2 under the chipset. The 120 Hertz really gives this phone a lot of life, though, you know, for its size. And the optimizations that Nothing does also boosts this phone up really good. Um, and it's only getting started for the Nothing 2A. I'm going to have to retest this, actually, in a couple months as more iterations of the software come out and it gets more optimized and better. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, and informing, click the like button for me. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know what else you want to see. Which ones you want to see next. I got plenty of videos lined up, but I always like to hear your feedback anyway. So comment that down below. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Nick here. And peace.